Happy Easter, everyone. It is so good to be with you this morning. I am super excited because today is our celebration. Remember last week we talked about Palm Sunday and how <clears throat> Jesus was coming into the town and they found him guilty of nothing. And they decided that they were going to crucify him. And we think about that um, on Good Friday, and that is our sad day. But today is the day that we celebrate. And I'm going to tell you a story and talk to you a little bit why we get to celebrate. Even though it is sad that Jesus died, he did it for you and me. We're going to talk about that. I want to pray for us before we get started, and then I'll kind of explain what we're going to do today. All right. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord, that that we get to worship you uh, in a building at church, or we can worship you at home. We can worship you anywhere, Lord, and we're thankful for that. Lord, we just pray that you will uh, help us get exactly what you want us to get this message this morning. I pray that you will help us to really think about, about uh, the miraculous things that you did for us and help us to always know that we can trust you because you have kept your word throughout the whole Bible, Lord, and you are always there. And the Bible is truth and we believe everything that you say. Lord, just be with all of the families that are together and apart during this Easter and this Resurrection Sunday. And I just pray that that you'll use me um, to be able to convey this lesson to the children and that the children will have fun while they learn a little bit more about your story. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to get started. And um, so let me explain a little bit about what we're going to do today. So first I'm going to kind of introduce the topic. We're going to talk about it a little bit. And then I'm going to share the Easter story with you. And then I found something really cool that I think might help you remember the order of the story, the Easter story. And I've never seen it before and I thought it was really neat. And so I thought I would try it. Um, we're gonna have to go to another area of my house because I had to put these things up on the wall and I only have like one big wall. So I will take you there later. I do not have a science experiment today because I didn't have all the materials that I needed. But um, I think we're gonna have a good time today. It's gonna be a, probably a little bit shorter than our last lesson because the story seems to be a little bit shorter. But we'll see, we'll see where it takes us. God's in charge, not me. All right, how many of you like magic tricks? I know some of you like them because I remember in junior worship, we watched a magician pull a rabbit out of a hat. And if you like magic, then you're gonna like my magic trick. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm going to write something on my whiteboard going to write a word. Are you ready? Okay. Do you know what I wrote? Do you know? Did you say no? You're right. I did write no. Very good. I wonder if that's backwards to you. Probably is. Let's see. We can do. No. I wrote no. See, I told you I was a magician. You want to see an even better magic trick? Watch this. <clears throat> see this cracker? Look very carefully. It's just a cracker. Just an ordinary Ritz cracker. And I'm, I bet you that I can make <clears throat> this cracker disappear. Count me down. Three, two, one. <laughs> See? Taylor, can you get my water? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, turn the light off. She unplugged my light. Plug my light in. All right. Taylor's going to get my water because that cracker was a little dry. I told you that I could make it disappear. I bet you can do magic too. Now, 
That was my magic trick. Now, last week we talked about Jesus' death, and we talked about how he was put in a tomb. And we talked about how all his friends were super sad because he died. Right? But something kind of magical happened. Now, it wasn't exactly magic. It was just D Jesus doing what only Jesus could do. And we're going to open our Bibles to John chapter 20. And we're going to focus on uh, verse 1 and 2. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, breathlessly panting. They took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. So that is our, that's our piece of scripture that we're going to be focusing on today. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb where Jesus was because she wants to put spices on him so he doesn't start smelling like a dead guy. She gets there. She looks inside. Bam. No one's there. He disappeared. Just like my cracker. Okay, maybe not just like my cracker, but it seems a little more legit, doesn't it? So Jesus disappears. Mary runs back to Simon Peter, tells him she can't find Jesus, and I'm sure he laughed at her. Oh, where was the last place you put him? Right? Like, so they knew that Jesus was in that tomb. How could he just disappear? It didn't make any sense. So they all go to the tomb together, and Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. Weeping means crying. As she wept, she knelt to look in the tomb and saw two angels sitting there, dressed in white. One at the head and the other at the foot where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why do you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they put him. And she sa said this. She turned and saw Jesus. After she said this, she turned and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't recognize him. Mary, he says, and instantly Mary recognizes the voice, the voice. Teacher, Jesus said, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Ascended means like gone to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the disciples. I saw the master, she told them, everything he said to her. Wait, what? So Jesus goes missing from his tomb, and now he shows up in front of her, and he's not dead anymore? Even though someone just saw him die the other day. Not only did they see him die, they buried him. They were the ones that put him there. This man was really dead. He was not faking it. And now he was standing in front of her? What does that mean? That's right. It means Jesus rose from the dead. That's pretty amazing. But what does it mean for you and me? Do any of you know? Think about that. What's it mean for us? Jesus rising from the dead is a huge deal. In fact, you could say that everything Jesus ever did hinges on him rising from the dead. Do you know why? He told, Jesus told everyone that he was the son of God he made all these claims. He said that he was sent from God, he, um, God who can do anything. He claimed to be able to save us from our sins from dying. But none of that matters if Jesus didn't, doesn't rise from the dead. Jesus proved he had the power to do everything, he said, because he had the power nobody else ever had to defeat death. If Jesus hadn't been raised from the dead, death would have proven more powerful than him. And it would have meant that Jesus wasn't all that he said he was. But Jesus did rise from the dead. And he proved once and for all that he had power to do anything and everything that he said and that we could trust him. So when Jesus says he can move mountains for us, we can believe him. When Jesus said he loves us, we can believe him. 
When Jesus says that our sins are forgiven, we can believe him, even when it's hard. When Jesus says that we are now able to be with God, we can believe him. When Jesus defeated death, he showed all of us that death isn't the end of us. No matter how grim and gloomy life gets, Jesus can defeat us, defeat it. He showed us that life is greater than death. Right now, we are dealing with this virus and it's scary for many people and we have to stay home and it's not the life that we think that we should be experiencing right now. We want to go places. We want to see our friends. We want to go to our church building and be with our church family. We want to do all these things and we can't. And it's kind of scary. But if Jesus has power over death, like we know we can trust him in this. And we know that he's going to get us through it and that there are going to be, there's going to be great things on the other side. So you just have to be patient and wait for God's perfect timing because his timing is always patient. It's always perfect. Patient. <laughs> he's always per, uh, patient. He's perfect too. So, okay. So I want you to remember that. Remember that Jesus, we can trust him because he kept his word and he has power over death. So today we learned that he rose from the dead. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. And we have the opportunity to be with, with heaven, with God in heaven, Jesus in heaven. Because he, he didn't just go in the tomb and, and not keep his word. He said the truth. And I want to focus on the Bible verse, John eleven twenty five. 25. It says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who believes in me will never die. So when we make that choice to follow Jesus um, and be baptized and get filled with the Holy Spirit, and we are going to live with, be able to live with him again one day. We are not going to be dead, our soul, and we will be alive in heaven with him. That is so exciting for us. All right, I'm going to ask you some questions, and then I'm going to take you to the other part of my house to do our little activity. Who went to the tomb on the morning of the third day? Mary Magdalene. Why was she there? What was she going to put on Jesus' body? Do you know? Spices. Yeah, so that the body wouldn't smell. What was strange about the tomb? Why was it so surprising? It was empty, right? She was going expecting to see his body. Who did Mary see in the tomb? Yes, two angels. Very good. Why do you think that Jesus' resurrection was important? There's some different answers for this. There's not really a um, going to be a specific answer, but remember we talked about we can believe him because he kept his word and we can trust him. And so his resurrection was important because it, it gave credit to his word and it, we can trust him. So what does the resurrection tell you about Jesus's power? Is Jesus's power weak or strong? Yeah, it's strong. It's so strong. He has power over everything, even death. That's exciting. All right. So I'm going to take you to the other part of my room. I hope this works. Um, I have, I'm going to tell you the Easter resurrection Bible story using one word. All right. And I'm going to show, I'm going to take my camera. Oh, snap. Oh, I spilled my water. All right. Let's go. So we're going to go to my stairway. Here's my front door. All right. Hopefully you can see this word. Oh, no, it's going to be backwards. All right. So the word is startling. S might look backwards to you. T-A-R-T-L-I-N-G. And parents, if it is backwards in the video, go ahead and write it on a piece of paper so that um, you can 
work through it with the kids. I think they will find this interesting. So the first word, the first thing we're going to look at is the word startling. What does startling mean? Startling is like something shocking or, or a little like you get startled. You're like, oh my goodness. So that's like startling. So startling. And I want you to remember this part of the story. Mary makes a startling discovery in a grave that is empty. Why was she startled? Because she was expecting to see Jesus' body and it wasn't there. So she makes a startling discovery. Now then, I'm going to take a letter away. I'm going to take a letter L away. Now what, what word do I have now? Starting. Starting. She is starting to wonder what has happened here. Hmm. Let's take another word away. Another letter. T. Now it says staring. Staring, like looking at. Now, Mary is staring at the stone that had been rolled away. What do you think Mary's face looked like? I think I would look like this. Like, what? She was so confused. Then I'm going to take the word, the letter A away. Now we have string. String, S-T-R-I-N-G, string. And I want you to remember this. All the clothes that Jesus was wearing were neatly folded up, not a loose string in sight. Now, we're going to take one more word, one more letter away. Letter R. I'm going to move these letters together. Now we have S, T, I, N, G, and that spells sting. Mary is feeling the sting. Mary is feeling the sting. Has someone stolen the body? Feeling the sting, it means it hurts her. She's a little angry at first. Like, did someone steal this body? Who would take him? She feels the sting. The next word, a letter that I'm going to take is T. Now what word do I have? Yeah, sing. Sing. Then she meets. Oh my goodness, my papers are sticking. Then she meets the risen Lord and she wants to sing because she discovered that Jesus is alive. So now she's happy. She wants to sing. Hmm, what letter will we take away next? I'm going to take the G away. Now we're taking the G away and we have the word sin. Uh-oh. Sin, remember the yucky stuff? The things that we might not do that is very good, the mistakes we make. Now she knows what happened on the cross. Jesus has broken the power of death and sin. And now we're going to take the S. What word do we have now? In. And through his resurrection, everyone who believed in him can be part of God's family. So that's when we're talking about when we believe and we're baptized and we decide to follow Jesus for the rest of our life, we get to be in his family. It's super exciting. Now I'm going to take one more letter away. And I have the word. What word is that? I. I. What do I do? Everybody needs to know. So Mary goes on her way to tell the disciples all about Jesus. And I want you to think about that. What can you do? Because you know the story of Jesus. You know what Jesus did for us. Yeah, you can go and tell all your friends and family and other people about Jesus too. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you got a little bit of learning out of our lesson today. I hope you liked that activity. It's called the... 
nine letters Easter story or something. So if you want to look it up, you can even print the letters out um, or you can write them. I thought about writing them on a dry erase board and erasing them as I went along. Um, so there's different ways you could do it, but it, it might be fun for you to try. And it, it might be fun to try and memorize the story and practice it. And then you can show your friends and family. It's pretty cool. I hope you guys have a great Easter. I hope you have a wonderful day with your family. And just remember that, yeah, the Easter bunny's fun and the Easter eggs are fun and the candy's fun. But the real reason for Easter is to celebrate our risen Savior and all that he did for us and to know that we can trust him and love him and just continue to live for him and share that joy and celebration with others. I'm going to close us in prayer and that'll be it. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. We are so thankful we get to celebrate you. Thank you for sending your son to die for us. Thank you for all the power that he has over death, over sin. Lord, help us to know that we can trust in him because he has overcome everything. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I will see you next week. Next week, we're going to start our um, Fruit of the Spirit unit. So we're going to do each week, we will learn about a new Fruit of the Spirit. And the first one we're going to talk about is love. So I will see you next week. Bye, guys.